One of the things people ask me about all the time is Bob Carver's Amazing Cube. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that what he called it? The Amazing uh, Cube? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah there was uh, the, the True Sub. The, the True Sub. Well, yeah. no, I, I had one of those yeah. things. And my biggest complaint was not that it, it, it put up prodigious amounts of bass, mm-hmm. but this tiny thing would, would start walking across the room. I mean, it was this tiny little box, mm-hmm. and it, it, it really was amazing how much bass. Mm-hmm. How did he do that? You know, he's such a character. I love oh, yeah. the audio Bob business. His sailor hat. Yeah. His captain's hat. <laughs> captain Bob. He um, and Carver. Well, at least it, it, in the Sunfire days, they were in uh, Snohomish, Washington, which is near where I grew up. Yeah. So I grew up in Bellevue, Washington. So they were locals. In fact, um, growing up in the audio business, my dad's speaker company, he was friends with Bob Carver or associates. And we had a set of one-off Carver monoblocks in, in the house, you know, uh, in my dad's stereo when I was a kid. The vacuum tube ones? Yeah, I, no, I, this was when I was only like six years old. So uh, I think they were his magnetic field design type. But, uh, you know, he's, he's a character and, you know, he knows his stuff, but he also doesn't always tell you what's really going on because sometimes it's, it's, it's a little larger than life in the explanation, uh, huh? but it really does work, but, <laughs> but not necessarily exactly the way he tells you. Yeah. So, um, actually there was an engineering company that was an offshoot of my dad's company that did the Carver Amazing loudspeaker ribbon design stuff. So there was, you know, there's been a, a little bit of a association there over the years. But, you know, the goal of that, uh, the true sub was, what, what's the most bass you can get out of a 12 by 12 by 12 cube? And, you know, he had a, an amplifier design that he called tracking down converter that was his tracking supply. And it could either deliver, deliver uh, a lot of volts uh, or a lot of current, um, you know, it, it, but not simultaneously. And so um, it happens that a woofer, where you're driving it, a subwoofer in a small box, there's a giant impedance peak, you know, in the middle of the range of where you're driving it. Oh, I see where you're going. So yeah. you don't need current, you need voltage. Right. Yeah. So you got to swing lots and lots yeah. of volts. And then, so he had it dialed in where this thing, he said, well, you know, these are the voltage rails, and if you calculate that into a forum load, it's like a 2,700 watt amp, but it's not actually delivering 2,700 watt amp, you know, 2,700 watts into the woofer because there's a 100 ohm impedance peak or something <laughs> in the middle of the range. Um, but it's, you're, you know, it's very optimized. You know, he basically took a woofer with a very large coil and large magnet and what he called high back EMF, which is high inductance, big impedance peak, big broad impedance peak. Um, high back EMF woofer and a passive radiator and an amp that could swing a ton of, of volts and um, use this efficient tracking power supply and came up with a pretty good um, you know amount of output. The, the other thing is he would talk about the displacement of the system and he would one side was a passive radiator and the other side was a woofer and he would add them up and say well if you look at these moving a couple inches peak to peak it's like an 18 inch woofer well, one thing he didn't tell you is they don't ever both move at the same time. So, uh, you know, at tuning, at the tuning frequency where the PR is moving, the woofer is essentially not moving at all. So you really can't add up the displacement and say, well, you know, they're both displacing two inches. So, you know, there's some of these marketing claims that were a little bit that, but the, the system still totally works and puts out a lot of bass and, um, you know, it, it, for a lot of people, you know, having a big output, but something that you can just hide away was, you know, you know, it's like the whole, you know, mini, mini speaker thing where you've got satellite subwoofers and things. So he, he was very effective at, at doing that and the amp know-how and just knowing how the system works uh, was great. Unfortunately, he started going after companies for, for patent reasons, saying that he had patented this back EMF um, design, small box woofer design, and there were a uh, court case actually, the guys at JL Audio out of the, the car side at the time, now of course they're, they're making home subs, uh, were some of the ones that testified against him and said, well, if you look at our 10W6 car woofer, it actually exceeds these claims and was prior art and they got the patent thrown out. But, you know, I understand he's trying to protect his, his sure. market and his, his idea and everything sure. like that, but it, it, um, wasn't anything magic. It was just like good sound engineering, like like everything, you know. And a lot of good marketing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, we love Bob Carver. Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, thank you, Chris. Thanks so much.